Matthew and James here from the Mini Wargaming Forge, and in this video, we're gonna unbox and review a new Bamboo Labs P1P 3D printer. And unboxing complete. Not bad, right? That's pretty easy. Yeah, I think it took us, obviously on camera it's fast, but uh, was that 20 minutes? Not even? So probably not even, yeah. yeah. Of course, read your manual. It's important. One thing I do want to point out is it came with a textured plate. I actually bought one because the Bamboo X1 Carbons came with smooth plates, which are no good for PLA. It sticks too well. That's an actual problem. Too much adhesion is a problem. I didn't realize that until I got the X1 Carbon, so I replaced it with the texture plates. But this one comes with it, so you can save the 30 or 40 bucks or whatever it costs to replace the plate. So there's still a couple things that have to be done. We have to run it through its first uh, boot up thing, which will do a test. It'll raise this up and then we can remove the foam, which I, you can't see, of course, because I'm not zoomed out enough. So we're going to run through that process now. So let's, uh, let's calibrate our printer. Now that it's in place, we gotta load up some filament, which obviously will be a bit more annoying than the typical screen that we use. Did you turn to find it? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Oh, turns out we do need to read the instructions. So you gotta manually put the temperature in. It's like click, 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 click. Did that work? Oh yeah, it did. It's going. And once we get to our temperature, what do you have to do next? Go to the E and then press it. Is it coming through? Yeah. Hey, there we go. Ah, there we are. It's feeding. Successfully loaded the PLA. I'm in my Bamboo Handy software. I've already added the printer over in Add Printer and make sure they have everything set. I set my densities to 10% just because that works. And we're going to grab the same model that I compared between the Prusa and the X1 Carbon, which is this wonderful Epic City tile from the Hexton Hills project. You can get that at miniwargaming.com slash Hexton. And uh, that's it. I've got. I've made sure to select textured plate, and I got the Bamboo Lab P1P nozzle. So we're gonna slice it. And it should only take a little less than an hour. I'm curious. Do I already have the printer on here? Let's find out. Print. Hey, there it is. I got to rename that, but that's fine. And it does do a time lapse. Okay, so it does have a camera now. For some reason, I thought it didn't. Let's send that over and see what happens. Oh, there we go. Come back in an hour and see how it works out. All the print is done. All right, go ahead. Take it off. So I got a little bit of stringing, just like we normally do with these prints. That's easy to get off the heat gun. But other than that, the quality looks really good. Let's compare it to one that was printed by an X1 Carbon. So one of these is printed by the Carbon. The one was printed by the P1P. If you can see the difference, your eyes are much better than mine, because I cannot. 
So if you're curious which one is which, the one on the left is the X1 carbon, the one on the right is the P1P. Now I really want to test it out though, so we're going to give it one of the Swamp models from the printable scenery Kickstarter at miniwargaming.com slash swamp. Because what I want to know is will it be able to have these nice smooth walls? Most printers that you'll print with FDM will have lines along them, but the bamboos have been able to not have that. So if this is the case, if it's able to print the same quality with these walls, then boy, have we found ourselves the perfect printer, at least for now. So let's find out. The print is done, we got the ruin. We're gonna take it off and take a closer look and compare it to the other ones that we have. Now the other ones we already have are already painted, but we should still be able to tell quality. What I'm looking for is lines, like layer lines on the bricks. Let's take a closer look. So take a nice close look. It looks really good. I do see, I do see some lines, but I, I would see the lines in the other ones anyways. It's just how smooth it is. And it's quite smooth. Well, let's compare it side by side. Okay, here's comparing to a painted one. Now I know it's gonna be a little harder because it's painted, so you're gonna to have to maybe rely on what I'm gonna say, but all I'm gonna say is, because I'm looking at each individual brick, like for example, this brick right here, and the lines that I can see there are identical to the lines I can see there, which I think first off is crazy that they're so precise that two separate printers printed exactly the same way, down to where I can see the specific lines like that's that's nuts so yeah it is definitely 100 percent the same level of detail as the x1 carbon so i think we've covered the major points comes to the textured plate the how long did the assembly take this was this was yesterday now that's why we're different shirts 20 minutes maybe yeah 20 minutes a little slower because we were recording with filming yeah yeah because we had to stop and change the camera every single time and uh, now, okay, what is it missing? Let's talk about what it's missing from the X1 Carbon. What are, what are the couple things that you notice right away? Besides, obviously, the casing. <laughs> uh, it's missing the case. It doesn't have the, the LiDAR. Which is not a big deal, because yeah. with, remember, and this is all in the, the framework of printing terrain. Um, you're going to want the textured sheet anyways, which is what it comes with now, apparently. And the texture sheet, you can't use the LiDAR. And I'm assuming that's because it's textured. And so, you know, running a LiDAR over it is going to bounce the light everywhere else. Yeah. So I know that it can't, well, all the ones that are bamboos over here, it keeps saying we can't use the LiDAR anyways. So no problem. What else is missing? Uh, the nozzle's a little different. That's right. So if you want to print more abrasive material, you won't be able to, which once again, in the context of 3D printing terrain, I've yet to come across a reason why you're gonna use anything but PLA. If you guys know of a reason why you'd be printing terrain in a stronger material, uh, like ABS or something, then let me know because I have no idea why you'd ever care. What else? What else is different? The screen. Ah, yes. That is that is a bit of a pain, but uh, the screen is a, is a bit of a potato. <laughs> it's a, because when you went to change the film and you had to like click, 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 click. You click, click a bunch of times to increase the temperature. Right. right but I, you think that, I think having a, a crappier screen is worth having half the price. Because <laughs> right now, I'm not sure if it's a sale or whatever, but on their site, it shows two prices. It shows one and crossed out and then it's $100 US cheaper, which makes it pretty much half the price of the X1 Carbon. Like I am actually regretting buying three X1 Carbons because I could have bought six P1Ps. Well, when I looked at the site the first time, I thought, well, the P1P has got to be crappier because it's so much cheaper because that's how 3D printers typically work. Mm -hmm. And the answer is no, it's not for our for our purposes here. Now, are we missing anything? Is there anything else that it's missing? It's even got the webcam. It does time lapses. Webcam, light, yeah. Yeah. You can, and by the way, this whole screen thing, who cares? Because if you have the app installed for Bamboo Handy, you can actually control all of those settings right from there. So you can set the temperature on your phone or your computer and not have to click it a million times. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's anything else though. I think that's pretty much it. It's yeah. almost identical. It is kind of nuts. And I, uh, I I have to say, I have now a new printer recommendation. It's not even gonna be like, uh, buy a Prusa if you want to spend this much and buy a Bamboo if you want to spend this much. It's like, no, Prusa, you're off the list, I'm sorry. I do need to try out the Mark IVs to see if they're comparable. But the thing is, 
they're way more expensive than this. So even if they can pull off the speed and the quality, you're paying more money. Yeah. And so, and for, I'll keep saying the caveat here, this is for 3D printing terrain, because then you don't care about the different materials. The P1P, I think, is your go-to printer. So now I only have two printer recommendations. Number one, 100% all the time, get this one. And 100% all the time, use the link below so that I get an affiliate commission. So you can help support the Mini Wargaming Forge. And by the way, I got that affiliate link after I got the Bamboo products. I did not, I didn't get these because there's an affiliate program. I looked for an affiliate program after I got them and realized how much I love them. It's true. Um, and then, but if you, if you really want to go into the engineering of 3D printing and learn about every last little part, well, then the P1P is not going to be good for that because the um, Bamboo has more of a closed system, meaning that if you need things replaced, you're going to have to go through them. Whereas the Prusas, you can 3D print re replacement parts. Like you actually have a Prusa at home where we wrecked, yeah. we wrecked the entire extruder assembly. Yeah. And you were able to 3D print pretty much all the replacement parts. Pretty much, yeah. Except for the hot end. Yeah. Can't 3D print hot ends. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not yet. No, not yet. We'll get there. <laughs> you can 3D print metal, just not with these machines. Um, so yeah, so but if you are looking for a hobby printer where you're just like, I want to learn all about 3D printing, that's when I recommend the Ender 3s because they're super cheap and they'll break down on you so many times in the first couple of months that you'll learn all the little bits and pieces. Now you might think I'm joking, but part of me actually appreciates the fact that I started with the Ender 3 because I learned so much about it. But if you just want a 3D print, which like if I bought my iPhone or an Android, I wouldn't buy it with the hopes of learning how it works by fixing it or buying a computer or a car. You, you don't want to learn how to fix these things typically. You just want to use them. If that's the case, then 100%, my recommendation right now, in six months or a year from now, that could change because technology for this is changing so quickly, is the Bamboo Lab P1P, 100%. Yep. You agree? I agree. You don't have to agree. No, I do though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. James has printer envy. Does what do you have at home? Uh, I've got an Ender 3. And but now, now you got a Prusa. And I got the Prusa. Now you got the Prusa. Got a, yeah. <laughs> Which you're, you're fixing and already going, I don't even want this anymore. I want <laughs> yeah. one of these. No, I get it. So, so yeah, 100% get this. Use the link below if you want to help support uh, Mini Wargaming Forge because it gives us a kickback of a small percentage of the sale. Um, and yeah, that, that's all I really have to say on it. So thanks, James, for helping put it all together. My pleasure. And uh, I have all the links to the different files that we printed and the different printers and all of that. And I'd love to hear your comments and what you think and whether you're gonna grab one of these. Let me know if you do buy one and put that in the comments. Thanks for watching. Happy 3D printing.